Hey y'all, welcome back. If you're new here, it's Katrina. Um, and in today's Vlogmas, I'm gonna be taking you guys along with me. I'm driving, so you know, I can't constantly look in the camera. But I'm gonna be taking y'all along with me because I actually have a consultation today to go see an eye doctor about LASIK vision correction. This is something that I've wanted to do for a really, really long time. It's something that I've been wanting to do, especially like seriously um, for the last year or so. I'm tired of wearing contacts. I don't, I think that at some point your eyes will be like too far gone in terms of the vision to actually like correct it. And so I want to correct it like as soon as I possibly can before I um, quote unquote you know am not considered a good candidate for it I don't really know what the specifics are behind determining that but that's what the console is for today so if you're looking to get vision correction I just wanted to kind of like bring y'all along so that you kind of like know what to expect you know what I mean so when I spoke to the lady, she said that the console is free and from my research, a lot of the places that, not a lot of them, all of them said that their consultations are free and they have you come in so they can take a look at your eyes to see if that, you know, if you're a candidate for the procedure. Um, I think right now is a really, really great time to do it because a lot of places are actually doing end of year sales and discounts we'll all say end of year discounts um for the for the new year and everything like that uh, and i want to say that that's common so if you're at the end of the year uh, right now is a really good time to do it i'm not sure when else they, they usually give these types of discounts but the place i'm going to is doing a thousand dollars off when you're trying to find some place i'd highly recommend you guys just do your research i would um, scout on Google and see, you know, just Google LASIK vision correction and just see what places are out there, what practices and doctors are out there and read the reviews. I, I'm, always, I'm the type of person who always reads the reviews on everything. I'd highly recommend you guys to do some thorough research. Find a place that has high ratings and good reviews that you're comfortable with because of course this is your health and your eyes and you never want to play around with that um so i found a place out in williamsburg i'm on my way on my way there now don't be afraid to venture out of your city if you have to i that's what i'm i'm choosing to do i live in hampton and i just wasn't completely sold on the places in my immediate area so this is about a 40 minute drive and when i spoke to the lady she was very thorough i had i had a i had a couple questions but really i just asked her if she could go ahead and tell me how all of this works and so for me i don't know about anywhere else but i did set up an appointment with another place who wasn't as thorough so i'm, I'm glad that i'm not going with that place i never even went to the consultation um i decided to cancel it i just it just wasn't the right time so anyway she said that we're gonna go ahead and set up your console appointment and then it's important for me not to wear contacts in my eyes the seven days prior to that appointment so i've been in glasses the last week and i don't mind wearing glasses um I don't think I look bad in them. I don't know that this is necessarily my my best style in terms of glasses. I've had these Ray-Bans for years and years and years, just never replaced them. Um, but like my nose gets really red on the bridge of my nose where my glasses are just like constantly resting on my nose. Um, and I just, I hate like having to constantly take contacts out, put them in, uh, and, and just have to be like, you know, I can't see very well, you know what I mean? Not, you know, without contacts and glasses and things. So I'm just really excited 
to see what they say. So I have been wearing contacts for the last seven days. Um, she said that the appointment would take about an hour and a half. And um, that's, that's a question that I did ask them. I said, you know, how long should I be expecting for this appointment to take? And I wasn't expecting for her to say 90 minutes, you know, an hour and a half. But she said that this is one of those appointments where they're actually gonna be dilating my eyes so that they can do the, do the exam. So it's gonna take about an hour and a half, I guess, for them to do the exam, talk to me, see what my options are, and, and do all of that. So I think that that's pretty much all there is to share. Um, it's a pretty, it's a pretty, I think, straightforward process. She said that the price of the uh, procedure, she said the price of the procedure is all inclusive. So it would include the actual procedure, of course, and then it also includes the. Uh, prescription eye drops I guess that I'll have to use I'm guessing I'll find out more about all of that once we actually get through the exam to determine if I'm even a candidate but she said that the price of the procedure includes the prescriptive drops I'll need after the procedure and all of the follow-up appointments I'll need after as well and I'm not sure like how many follow-up appointments we'll need or, or what all that would entail. Um, but today I'm just going in to kind of get the rundown, see what to expect and all of that. They did give me the price up front so you, you all are able to just up front get the current price from them. Um, I'm on the way there now so I will update you guys. I don't know like I don't think I'll be able to actually like film me like in the office and stuff like that but I'll definitely be coming back and updating you guys and letting you know how it goes so I'll see y'all in a minute. Hey y'all so I'm back from my appointment um everything went really really well apparently I, well not apparently I knew this already I have a scar on my right eye so because it's a decent size scar he said that um, I'm definitely a candidate for vision correction it's just wouldn't be LASIK he said I would have to do PRK which has been around for a really long time I hope that you guys can see me okay by the way um, I let me see my eyes are dilated so I can't really um, I need these I need the little shade things so that I can be able to see because my eyes are so dilated they need to be protected from the Sun um, it's way too bright out here in the outside world um, without them so I'm not able to really see how well um, the picture is on this video so I hope that it's okay if not, I mean, I guess I'll have to film it again. It's a little glared, so I'm not able, I just, I'm not able to see it the best right now. Anyway, so because I have that scar on my eye, he said that I am, I am a candidate for vision correction. He wouldn't do LASIK, he would suggest PRK. They both give the same results, they both cost the same they just the PRK has a longer a longer recovery time is what it is it's not as convenient and kind of out in and out as LASIK is PRK has been done for a really really long time I think that's what they were doing before they got into LASIK and so with LASIK they make some sort of a flap and then the uh, laser does whatever it needs to do to the eye and then that flap is put back on the eye while PRK the way they explained it is that PRK actually uh, removes a tiny tiny layer of the eye altogether um, and, and then it does what it needs to do um, on the eye and then from there you're they put some sort of a contact or something on the eye 
that would stay on there throughout the healing process. Um, with LASIK, they said that you can have pretty good vision within like the next day. With PRK, he said that you're looking at seeing an improvement in your vision. Um, as the days progress, you won't really start to get pretty, pretty good vision, like crisp vision until like month one, I believe is what he was saying. And then um, it can take longer for some people. It could take um, more like two to three months before you get the full, full strength of whatever that correction was, um, which is usually 20, 2020. So he said that you, with PRK, you have um, a 5% or less chance of having to have to have the procedure done a second time. And as I'm saying that, I actually need to call them and double check if I were to fall on that 5%, is that another expense I'll have to cover or is that included in the overall cost? Will I be good or is it something that I may have to, you know, invest in again? You know what I mean? So I will call them and give you guys the update on that. I'm not sure. I'll probably leave it in the description box below. So what he said is that, or from there I ended up talking to the, I don't know, I guess one of the nurses or one of the other administrative ladies he has at his office and she explained the whole process to me, how everything would go, the cost and everything like that. And just to back up, when you go in for your consultation, I'd highly recommend that first of all, if you're setting the consultation, that you are sure you actually want to proceed with with this within the next six months because that's something that they didn't tell me up front. And so if I if I decide not to do this within the next six months, I have to go in there and go through this whole two hour process of the consultation another time before they can actually like you have to be re-approved as a, a good candidate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so keep that in mind. And if you do, I'd highly recommend you bring some sunglasses. Um, they have these little inserts that you just insert behind your glasses and they have this little like, um, they're extended on the side here so that they just sit on top of the legs of your glasses. So luckily that was good that they gave me that. Even if I had regular glasses, I probably wouldn't be able to wear them anyway because, you know, I'm wearing my glasses and I didn't plan to put my contacts in. So, when you go in for your appointment, they ask you a bunch of questions and they go ahead and they have you look through the little machines that they have and they make some measurements and adjustments. It's pretty much you just looking into something and um, them looking at your eyes, taking a couple of measurements and all of that. They'll, you'll go in, meet with the doctor just like you would when you go to see your eye doctor and they'll flip through the little lenses to see what's best for you, like which number, one or two, two or three, blah, blah, blah. And then from there, the doctor puts numbing drops in your eyes and then he'll put di di dilation eye, eye drops, I guess, the eye drops that dilate your eyes. And so I asked myself, you know, why do you guys numb my eyes? Am I going to be in, are you guys going to hurt me? <laughs> and they started laughing like, no, we're not going to hurt you. The eye drops that, they, that we use for dilating the eyes can burn quite a bit. And so that's the whole purpose of the numbing drops and the, um, before, before actually applying the dilating eye drops. Um, so from there I had to go sit in the waiting room for a good, probably 15, 20 minutes, I'd say. They brought me back in, um, to see like, they had like a second person, one of the nurses, or I think it's called an ophthalmologist assistant or something, op optometric, optometric assistant.
assistant? I'm not sure. So, but one of his assistants do a double check to make sure that it's that that the numbers that the doctor got when he refracted your eyes, which is when they put those lenses in front of you to say, you know, you know, one or two, two or three. They do that again to, I think, to just double check that the numbers are correct. Um, and then from there, she has like this, um, some sort of instrument. And just like how you would go to touch your eye to put contacts on, she uses the instrument to touch the eye and to do that, or the reason for them doing that is to measure the thickness of your cornea to make sure that this is actually something that your eyes would be able to handle. You know, the procedure is something that your eyes would be able to handle. And so after that, they take you into a, another room and you talk to one of their administrative, administrative assistants who talks you through the entire process of what you would expect, how much it'll cost, um, what what that whole pro procedure day would look like, what it would require of you. So for PRK, she said that um, I wouldn't be able to drive immediately after my appointment. I'd actually have to have someone with me. I'd actually have to have someone with me to drive me back home. Um, she said that the next day I should be okay to drive myself to the appointment. The next day you would actually have to come back for a follow-up appointment. And then, so from there, I'm actually not sure. Um, and that's another question I'm going to have to ask. How many, how many post-operative appointments am I going to have to come to and how often are those? So that's something else that I'll leave in the description for you guys below. I'm going to leave the price out here for you guys. I'm not sure like how helpful it'll be because I can imagine that it'll it'll vary from place to place depending on your location, where you live ge geographically, and um, you know who's doing it. So for me, it's going to cost forty six hundred, and that is with a one thousand dollar discount. And what they said is that. I lock in this discount for the next six months. So as long as I schedule my appointment within six months of my appoint of, of my consultation, I'll be able to lock that I'll be able to lock that discounted price in, which is really, really great because I was really wanting the discounted price and I was just that was like one of my number one questions is how long can I lock that in? Um, the other thing is that they take cash credit and I guess cash card or um, they do care credit as, as like a financing type option which means that you can actually finance your procedure and you'll have 24 months to pay it off at 0% interest so, so you won't be charged any interest you'll just be charged whatever it costs to actually do the procedure and you'll have 24 months to pay that off and then if you don't pay it off within those two years then you're going to have to start paying interest on whatever you have remaining on that balance and the interest is based on whatever credit it is that they did with you, I guess, at the time. Or maybe it's even based on what your credit is at that time after the 24 months. So they gave me a folder with all of this information in it. So it's not like I have to memorize these things, but it's something that I wanted to share with you guys. I'm not sure like what kind of videos are out there for this kind of a thing that kind of educates people on what to expect that's something i i mean i did watch videos but that's not something that i realized that you have to do this all over again in six months if this is something that you decide to do later on down the road and not now you know what i mean okay so just to walk you guys through the whole procedure and how everything would work so for the seven days prior to my procedure, I would have to make sure that I'm not wearing any contacts. Um, that 
Friday before my procedure, she said that I will need to have gone ahead and submit my payment. And while we're talking about payment, she said that if you decide to do the care credit, you'll apply whenever you're ready to apply. They'll, they'll send you a, an actual like card, you know, like a credit card. And so you would hold on to that card and then when it's time to pay, that's what you would use when you call them to submit your payment for the procedure. Prior to your procedure, they, they would also be sending a prescription um, to your pharmacy for Valium. And that's a prescription they said that you'll go and fill, you'll pick it up, and you'll make sure that you have it on you when you arrive for your procedure. And um, this is something that you won't take. You'll just bring it with you to your procedure and they'll tell you when you can take it. From there, she said you would have your procedure. So someone will have to be there with you so that they can take you back home after your procedure because you can't drive. And after you leave for, from the procedure, they actually call in another prescription for you for Vicodin. I'm not sure like at what point you take the Vicodin or what what the instructions are for that. I'm guessing it's just for um, if you have any discomfort with your procedure. The doctor said that it's not a painful procedure. Um, it is something that you're gonna be awake for and you should tolerate just fine. But in, in those days afterwards healing, it can be uncomfortable. So I think that that's what the Vicodin is for. The following day, you'll show up for your follow-up appointment after the procedure. And at that time, you should be able to drive yourself from what I understand. And then that's, that's like the full, that's like the full process of what I understand it to be I'm going to call them with those other questions and I'll actually look through my little information packet over here because it's probably in there um but that's how it went it went pretty good I'm, I'm happy to hear that I'm a candidate and this is something that I can do you know I'm really looking forward to 2020 vision no glasses no contacts nothing okay so i really hope that this was helpful for you guys so it, it went well it wasn't uncomfortable or anything like that it just was like a long appointment so again if you're not sure about whether or not you're actually gonna follow through with it and have the means for the investment i'd highly recommend that you just you know put a hold on it and move on it when when you're ready to make that choice within six months you know what i mean because i mean i don't want to do all that again for, for like if I, if I can help it I don't want to do that all of that again um this took out this took out a big chunk of my day I had to take off work and all of that to do it which is fine you know I have paid leave but still you know we value our time over here so I hope this was really helpful for you guys and if you have any other questions let me know in the comments below otherwise I will talk to you guys later Bye.